We're going to start off by talking about art、mm-hmm. and photography. Do you like art? Hmm, that's interesting.、Um, depends on what. I like cinema, for instance, movies, music, but I don't know too much about、um, paintings or modern art. I'm not too familiar with, so it depends on what kind of art. Do you like to take photographs? Yes. I wouldn't say the photographs are good, but I do enjoy taking pictures. Yeah. Do you prefer to take photos of yourself or other things? Of other things, it's kind of hard to take pictures of yourself unless it's a selfie, and that's limited. So pictures of other things mostly. Now let's talk about animals.、Mm-hmm. Do you like animals? I love animals. Uh, land animals, friendly, so to speak, animals, not insects and not anything from the ocean. What is your favorite animal?、Um, probably a dog. Dogs, for obvious reasons, you can keep them as pets. In terms of like non-domesticated animals, probably jaguars. Do you have any animals in your home as pets? Yes, I have two dogs. They're both. From the shelter, the animal shelter, the rescues.、Um, yeah, I've always had pets. Our family really likes keeping animals around. Now let's talk about bags. What type of bags do you like? I prefer purses that are a little bit on the larger side, just because I like to put every thing of my life in my purse.、Um, So it ends up weighing maybe twenty kilos. Yeah, larger bags, probably structured, larger bags. How often do you carry a bag when you go out? Every day. I think that's the case for most women. I think they carry a bag every. Even if you go down to the grocery or the supermarket, you take your bag with you usually, right? What sort of bags do women like to buy? It depends. Um, it depends on your outfit. It depends on where you're going.、Um, for the day, if you're going to the office, you probably want something bigger that can fit your laptop, your phone, paperwork,、um, everything that you might need during the day.、Um, if it's nighttime, you'd want something smaller, like a clutch, something more sleek, elegant.、Um, So it depends. If you're traveling, you'd want a much bigger bag that's able to fit,、mm-hmm. not just you, but all of your family's stuff as well. So everything. Women like all kinds of bags. That's why we have so many of them. Now let's talk about birthdays.、Mm-hmm. What did you usually do on your birthday when you were a child? So when I was a kid, when I was a child,、um, in school, we had a uniform. Everybody wore a uniform to school. So. When it was your birthday, it was the one day of the year that you were allowed to wear whatever you wanted. So it was a big deal. I mean, at least I would pick out my outfit like two months in advance. It would be like a little dress, like a princessy frock, matching shoes, matching accessories for your hair, and then you would take some kind of chocolate or candy to school, and then you could take like a period off and go and. Give the candy out to other teachers and other kids in the school, and we looked forward to it every year. It was the highlight to get to not have to wear the uniform, to wear whatever you wanted, and to basically be able to skip class and go out and hand out chocolates because it's your birthday. How do you normally celebrate your birthday now? Hmm, very differently. Everyone's allowed to wear whatever they want now, so it's kind of not <laughs> doesn't have the same charm.、Um, It depends. I like to do a little dinner with、um, my friends, something low key. I'm not a very big party person, so dinner is usually good,、um, followed by probably like a games night or a movies movie night at home or at the cinema, something low key. Do you think it's important to give someone a card on their birthday, like a handwritten, like a birthday card? Um. I think so. Yes, because I'm quite sentimental and emotional, so I prefer more、um, emotional, sentimental gifts. So I think if someone takes the time to write something by hand for you, I think that 
I mean, I hold on to stuff like that. So I think it's a very nice, thoughtful present to give someone on their birthday. The first time I met a new friend. So I'm going to go way back. It was my first day of school, kindergarten. And I met a girl named Amanpreet Kaur. Um, she, we were about, I think we just turned four years old. Uh, we met obviously in kindergarten, um, first day of school. Uh, what I liked about her when I first saw her, I mean, we were sitting together where the teacher made us sit next to each other. And um, she had this long hair and it was like sectioned into two parts and it was just braided all the way down. And she had the cutest face I've ever seen. She had this little fluffy marshmallow-like face. I guess that's all it takes when you're a kid to want to be friends with somebody. Um, and then I tried to... So there's like this little thing that kids do where they put their thumb out to show other kids that I want to be your friend. Um, and then if you don't want to be friends with them, you do this. It's like a it's silly little thing. So I did this to her. I put my thumb out to say, hey, do you want to be friends? And she was like this. And I was heartbroken. I was like, how can she not <laughs> want to be my friend? Um, and then I saw her again the next day. Um, and the day, the next day after that and the day after that. And then eventually we ended up becoming best friends. She, she did it back to me, obviously, at some point. She was my first best friend that I ever had in life. She was from Punjab, which is a part of India. Um, and her mom used to make the most amazing, it's called paratha. It's like this stuffed bread. It's like they put a potato and spices into like a, into a flatbread. And my mom used to make something called sira, which is sweet semolina situation. That's the end of the two minutes. Okay. We've been talking about a friend that you met. And we're mm -hmm. going to now talk about friends at school. How important is it for children to have lots of friends at school? To thank you for watching this video, I want to give you a free course that has helped thousands of students improve their IELTS speaking score. What it's going to do is take you through every single part of the test and give you strategies for part one, part two and part three and also allow you to practice at home for free and get feedback. To sign up for that for free, all you have to do is just click the link in the description. Thanks very much and let's get back to the video. It depends, I would say. I would perhaps think that quality is more important than quantity. So I wouldn't say that the objective should be to make as many friends as you can or to be popular um, as much as the objective should be to build meaningful friendships with people. That could be one person, that could be five people, that could be 10 people, situational, I would say. Yeah, so it's not so much how many friends you have as um, it's, it's not as important to have a lot of friends as it might be to have people that you can trust, that you can kind of take with you in life for a longer term. Do you think it is wrong for parents to choose which friends their children have? Mm. Again, that's a tricky one. Now, when I answer these questions, I'm thinking back to real life situations. And in some cases, I have seen parents interfering and trying to make those decisions for their children where they were right to do so because the child was in bad company and they were too naive or too, um, I mean, I guess they were just too naive to see that that situation was not right for them. But the parent obviously was able to identify that my child's in bad company. So in those cases, I would say that your parents are able to read a dangerous situation better. But there's also the flip side where everybody kind of does make bad decisions. Your parents made bad decisions, you made bad decisions. And the way that you learn from them is to have a negative experience and then find your way out of it. Um, so I would say that I can see certain situations, whether it's bad relationships, bad friendships um, when you're younger, not relationships when you're younger, friendships when you're younger, 
sometimes it's necessary to have that experience so that you know firsthand how to deal with that situation. And you may not be able to get that experience if your parents always shield you from every single thing that can go wrong. So I can kind of see, depends on the situation, I would say. Now let's talk about making new friends. Can you think of any disadvantages of making new friends online? Disadvantages of making new friends online? I think the I think there's more disadvantages to making <laughs> new friends. I mean, there was a show recently that came out on Netflix called Tinder Swindler. The thing is with uh, most of what we see online isn't real, whether it's social media or um, even news for that matter. Uh, everything is kind of edit edited and monitored to present a certain kind of image. So if you meet somebody online and you know nothing about them, they can really present any version of reality or a completely um, curated, sometimes dishonest form of their reality to you. So it's a very dangerous uh, game to play. Friendships or relationships? Both. Friendships. Friendships. Yeah, it's... Somebody you know nothing about is a very, everything can go wrong there, right? Would you say it is harder for people to make new friends as they get older? Yes. I think it becomes harder for people to make um, friends as they get older. I think adults are perhaps a little bit more, um, mm, more structured I mean, the older that you get, the more set you get in your ways, your routine, where you work, your family, your gym. Children, for children, it becomes, it's very easy for children to interact with other children. Like if you put two kids in a room and three seconds they're talking to each other without any restrictions, they're talking about all of their family secrets and everything, you know, they, they're comfortable. But with adults, obviously, people tend to be more filtered when they interact with other adults. Um, also, I think if you've been friends from the time that you were a child with somebody, you've lived through so many life events together that that kind of bond is hard to build with someone that you meet in your mid 30s, because you've just lost so much time that you're learning something, you're learning about them from scratch, where they went to school, about their family, about their relationships, about their siblings. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's not impossible. You can make a lot of incredible friendships later in life, but it's probably harder to come by than if you were a kid in play school. So what I'm going to do now is give you feedback on each part because mm -hmm. each part is a little bit different. Give you some tips on, on, on how to perform as well or even better um, next okay. time. And then there are four marking criteria, uh, fluency and coherence, grammar, pronunciation and vocabulary. And I will give you a band for each of those and tell okay. you what band, the top is band nine. Okay. So let's see if you can get, get right at the top. So thank you for making it this far in the video. I want to give you 10% off our VIP course. The IELTS VIP course is the most successful IELTS course in the world. That is a fact because we have more band seven, eight and nine success stories than any other IELTS course in the entire world. We do that by simplifying the whole IELTS process, supporting you with some of the best IELTS teachers in the world and being with you every step of the way until you get the score that you need. All you have to do is just look down in the description, just click that and you can sign up. If you have any questions about the VIP course, always feel free to get in touch with us. We answer 100% of the questions that we get. Hope that you have become a VIP. If not, enjoy the rest of this free video. So part one, it's just normal everyday questions and you answered those very, very naturally. Again, it was like talking to a friend or a colleague and the length of your answers was also quite good. This is not a criticism and um, it's just kind of who you are as a person. You're a very friendly, chatty person who wants the other person to interact. Yeah. So you're often like girls like buying bags, right? That is fine in normal conversation. If you were to do the test for mm. real, the examiner could be quite stone faced because yeah. they're doing their job. They're not being unfriendly. 
they just have a job to do and they're right. trying to think about your grammar and your vocabulary and your pronunciation and your fluency and there's a lot going on there yeah and for them they cannot start to interact with you yeah and on test day you might not get a very friendly, friendly. examiner like mm -hmm. me i don't know whether i was friendly or yeah, not, you were, yeah. but they might be like you know, uh, Giving don't you do nothing. that. Or some of them could, you know, be having a bad day and they just like, don't ask questions. Now, <laughs> oh I God. have experienced with, with, not myself, but other students have said when they did that, they thought the examiner was criticizing them or being rude. They took that to heart and yeah. thought, oh my God, I've failed my test. And they went from doing very, very well to everything fell apart because if you feel nervous yeah if you're uncomfortable with someone then it really affects your fluency you can clam up you don't want to really show your language and who you are you don't want to because one of the great uh, advantages or or great strength that you have is you you've, you're very open about, about who you are as a person and that's great because it allows you to speak in a very fluent way. If you go and do the test for real, probably don't interact with the examiner as much. Part two, you did a great job because you just picked a real event, a real person from your life. And it's much easier to talk about that. Some students try to pick something high level or impressive to impress the examiner. Mm. There's no such thing. Mm. Uh, the best thing to do is pick something from your real life because that's easy to talk about. Part three, you did very, very well because you really extended your answers. Again, you use real situations from your own life. You don't have to do that, but it really did help you develop your answers. In terms of the scores, pronunciation is pretty much perfect. The examiner will be thinking about, can I understand every word this person is saying? 100%, I can understand every syllable. Then the, the examiner will be thinking about high level pronunciation features, such as your intonation. So our voices go up, our voices go down. You speak like a native English speaker in that respect. Sentence stress is when we emphasize certain words. This is my phone, not your phone. Mm. So you emphasize certain words at times. Again, you do that 100% naturally. And then you use connected speech. The way native English speakers talk, we wouldn't say... I want to talk about my friend. You'd say, I want to talk about my friend. The flow of the language. So absolutely perfect. No problems there. Coherence and fluency. Coherence is, did you answer the questions? Did you develop them enough? You did that 100% of the time. And then fluency is, did you speak without any um, unnatural pausing? You did pause at times, but the reason why you paused is important. So in the last, I think it was the second last question, you were talking about adults and you were saying their lives are more structured. So you weren't trying to think of the correct vocabulary because your English isn't good enough. You were trying to just formulate your thoughts mm. and come up with the appropriate, precise word, mm -hmm. which you did. So that demonstrates to the examiner that you have a very high level of vocabulary. Because if you were, because um, um, you're trying to think of the what's correct, the word, uh, what's the word? Yeah. What, so when people don't really know the language, then they would stop. And also because you approach this not as a test, but more as a conversation, and you are very open and talk about your, your life in a very open way, that really helps with fluency. So again, top marks for, for fluency and coherence. Grammar, I didn't hear a single grammar mistake. The examiner will be thinking about the accuracy of your grammar. Did you make any mistakes? And the range of your grammar. So if I talk to you about a birthday party in the past, did you use the appropriate past tenses? Mm. And then I asked you about, well, what do you do today? Did you switch tenses? Did you use the appropriate grammatical structures and tenses to talk about each, each situation? And again, you did that perfectly. Mm -hmm. Vocabulary, very natural. You use a nice mixture of just normal everyday words, which everybody uses. And you also use idiomatic language very, very well. So as you can see, you're using very natural English. And overall, you would get a perfect band nine, oh, wow. which is very rare. Oh, wow. Very, very rare. Okay. So, well done. Thank you. <laughs>